half the Arsenal team, Mesut Ozil, Alexis Sanchez at the time, was just sitting right there staring at me. To the left, Ellie Goulding sitting staring at me. Uh, Thierry Henry, uh, there could have been more, but that's that, the people all. And obviously, we haven't even talked about the, the 25,000 yeah. people. Good to have you on. Pleasure, pleasure to be on, please. Now, I'm going to start, uh, Jarrett, and just by giving a little bit of background. Uh, Myself and Anda actually know you um, yeah. from uni. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to address you by Jarrett Oak because it's, it's the That's only thing that, that, that I know you as. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, just a bit of background history for the viewers. Us three are actually part of a successful management team. Um, you know, probably, That's right, but... probably one of Jarrett Oak's biggest uh, career achievements, I'd yeah. say. Um, we actually were three managers part of a, a five management team that. Uh, took the uh, St Mary's University College Belfast Community team to uh, all Ireland success. Strictly professional. Just Strictly professional. Yeah, yeah. You're the one that makes it, Johnny. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just in case probably the, the, the three managers in this team were probably more professional than the other two. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll leave that to... You know, to <laughs> That's another discussion. Yeah. Yeah. So, Charlie, we're just going to start off this evening um, discussing the current situation you know, uh, of lockdown and COVID at the moment. Yeah. You know, uh, like our previous guest, you're very heavily involved um, in, in football at a high, the high level. Mm. How has lockdown affected you um, and sport in particular? I'm sure everyone else is on the same boat. Like it's, um, you, try, you try and adapt to it the best you can because obviously it's not natural. What we're doing at the minute is not what you've sort of been brought up to think or do, doing things by yourself. You know, you're always sort of taught to do things as a team and different things like that there. And again, it can be tough to adapt to it. You're sort of in your own wee bubble now and you have to do things yourself and self-motivation. There's no one else there to hold your hand and bring you along. You know, it's really sort of self-driven, I find. Um, and again, like there's no point saying it's it's easy because it's it's not it's 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 very tough it's it's a lot tougher than if you were back uh, in a team setting, um. But again, like I sort of played for that team aspect personally. Maybe other boys are different, but it's sort of the the crack that and you know yourself the crack you know, at training and stuff and even the crowd at games and all you know it gives you that sort of adrenaline and. Just sort of that extra gear, you know. I got that. Uh, no, the, it gives you just. It get, honestly gives you an extra gear too. Whenever there, there is a crowd there, sort of. Yeah. So, Charlie, we are going to go on to our first segment, which is mastermind. So, just like the show, we have a bit different. You have one minute on the clock. You yeah. ask if you don't know the right answer. Yeah. You all questions are based on your chosen topic. And do you want to remind us what your chosen topic is? I went for basketball, NBA basketball, yeah. That indeed. So, <clears throat> Paul will ask the questions. I will check the time on my watch <clears throat> and I will give a countdown. I will give a countdown, yeah. That there is okay. Three, <clears throat> two, one, go. Who was the last year's MVP? Giannis and Tante de Kumpo. Who has won the most NBA championships as a player? Bill Russell with 11. How many MVPs has Michael Jordan won? Five. Can you name this year's current NBA scoring leader? Uh, I'm going to go with James Harden. What team won the very first NBA game, the Toronto Huskies or the New York Knicks? New York Knicks. Can you name this year's current NBA assist leader? Assist leader? Oh God. Uh, Rondo. What team defeated the Shaq Kobe Lakers in the 2004 Finals? Detroit Pistons. Who has scored the most ever points in a single NBA game? Will Chamberlain with Arnold. Who is the only ever unanimous MVP? Steph Curry. Who was the youngest player to score 10,000 points in the NBA? LeBron. What team drafted Kobe Bryant? Charlotte Hornets. Who was the first NBA player to test positive for COVID-19? Oh. Okay. Well, I, I think it was Ruby Gobert because it just stand out. Yeah, I think you were right. Answer. And stuff. Big deal. So, <clears throat> we have... 13 questions answered there, and you correctly answered 11. Ah, so pretty good. I'll take that, I'll take that. 11 in a minute is pretty good. I'll take it. Um, the NBA scoring leader currently is Bradley B. 
Oh, no, he's having a great, that. great year. Yeah. James Harden just behind him, and the NBA assist leader is James Harden. Is James Harden that? James Harden, uh, I think he's averaging about 11. So the only ones yeah. that he missed was the score leader and assist leader this year. So, you know, obviously. Although when this release is that going to change, like, can match it right now? We'll have to double check. <laughs> just, just, yeah. Check out for that. So, Charlie, we'll just go to another interesting topic. And this one is the AFL. Okay. Mm. Now, I'm just going to ask the question that I, I've heard various rumours at various stages. Probably since um, I know a, a shared experience with you in uni, and probably more so over the last couple of years, was there ever a link there, or is it all speculation? Uh, I suppose I can talk about it now. Um, early on, around maybe I think it was sixteen. Yeah, I was sixteen at the time, playing with the Alma Miners, and had a fairly decent year. Um, and was approached and went to a combine in Dublin. Do you want to explain what that is? It was just it was it was just like a weekend down in Dublin that they'd taken maybe scouts had already looked looked at the championship that year and picked out maybe fifteen players that they thought would maybe would suit the sport. Um, brought us down to Dublin. There was various scouts there from different clubs over in Australia, um, and we just went through different uh, drills, different like sprint, twenty meter sprint. Tests, tests, yeah, sorry, tests and, and vertical jump test, bleep test, the whole lot, and then went through skills and stuff. And then the last day I played again um, and actually end up winning a Sydney Swans jersey from Ty Canelli. We took a crossbar challenge at the end, uh, and I think myself and Mark O'Connor hit the crossbar, who's actually playing over in G Long mm-hmm. at the minute. So, you the company you run at that stage? Yeah, the company, yeah, like. Kevin McShane was there from Toronto, we all know him. Conor Callahan was there. Um, Killian Spillane, we all burned the second place from Kerry too. It's probably now you just look Kirk. back and say that was a company that I was in. Obviously, those names weren't. At the time, at that time yeah, you were 16. Sort of, yeah. Well, you know, we can look back and say that I was held in that regard. I wouldn't say that, like, but it was, it was it was nice to be recognised at the time, so young, because I was one of the youngest, youngest there and maybe didn't wasn't as developed as other boys. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the game, and then they both hit the crossbar. So then we just had a shot from the sideline, and I ended up by pure luck because I'm no great kicker of an AFL ball, trust me. But he just happened to miss, and I happened to put it over, and I got the Sydney Swans jersey, and he went up G Long and made thousands, <laughs> and I'm stuck here in the kitchen. <laughs> what, what happened next? Um, so what happened next was just never, never approached, or never approached. Like I, I was very young, I'm probably too young. And didn't probably didn't test too well. I think I tested fairly well in the vertical jump, and that was it really. Uh, it wasn't bad. It wasn't at the bottom or anything, but you know, to get scouted or to get seen and for them just to stand out and need to be getting exceptional mm-hmm. scores in, in in some in multiple tests. So I wasn't at that level, um, and right, rightfully so. Um, but it was it was an experience definitely, and I enjoyed it definitely. Yeah. And it's had come after that, or was that the end of Jared Thorgan AFL? Well, then at the time we did so well to keep it under wraps. I can, I've never heard that before. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, no, so after the 2019 season. As recent as that, yeah. Yeah, after the 2019 season, I then went to England to do PGC. Uh, and was over there full time from the odd weekend, different things I got there. It's probably affecting me this season in terms of fitness and stuff and speed, but that's a conversation for another day. Um, and I just had an Instagram request message, and I had somebody had sent it to me on the Saturday. I only had seen it on the Tuesday, so it wasn't like I was. And I happened to see it and clicked into it, and it was. I'm not saying his name, but a man from uh, an AFI club over in Australia, uh, the G Long club that Mark Connors with, um, saying basically saying, look, we're very interested in you know come, having you over and saying you up, and um, are you interested, blah blah blah. So we we had talks back and forth, Zoom calls, and different things I got there. He had sent different videos of the complex and stuff, and at the time, a few people tried to keep it really low key. Mm-hmm. Uh, mainly because uh, Dad was going for the presidency of the GA at the time, 
and was obviously turned around Ireland talking to different people and I didn't want getting out that I was in talks with the AFL team like how it wouldn't look good for him trying to become the president of the association and the sons yeah. going to be leaving or whatever so we kept it really under wraps and not many people knew that but I suppose it's fine now because it's um, at the time then I was planning on going over and I always knew I wasn't going to take up on it it's nice to go through the process but but it was just nice yeah it was it was nice like and it, i just knew i'd sort of i didn't see the point in going over after sort of establishing yourself and most people will go over when they haven't maybe broke on to the county scene senior team yet and they haven't you know had that breakthrough or whatever uh and so my life was sort of set i come off a good season when i was and i was enjoying it and i'd made friends and I had just finished my PGC, or about to finish the PGC to go into teaching. So it was sort of the path was laid there for me, and was, I was happy enough. I was like, a lot of people said to me, Why didn't you go? Like, why didn't you say no? And it was just a happiness thing. I just don't think that like, you know, all the money in the world, but if you're not happy, what's the point? Any regrets? Any regrets? I'd be lying if I said I had no regrets. Because if, if I put a contract on that table, you, you've made it pretty clear you're happy enough with your decision. Now. Oh, yeah. But if I put same. that contract on your table, does Charlie take it home tonight and have a serious, serious think about it? No. 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 Okay. Definitely not. No. I'm, happy, I'm happy with my decision. And uh, just, you, you didn't grow up with, you know, hoping to get signed up. It wasn't anything. Because, you know, you're talking about growing up, and that's obviously for you when you're younger. I remember living with you, uh, you know, Sharing experiences with you in Belfast, Jordan. I knew your your goal was to play for Armagh. Exactly. Know? Yeah. So yeah. you you got there. You were talking about you established yourself. You know, this this was all new coming from the FL. Oh, yes, it's nice to hear and all those things. Mm-hmm. But you've worked so hard for X amount of years to get to the goal. You're literally touching where you want to get to. Exactly. You have an extra step or two to go. Yeah. Especially, I don't think Charlie was throwing that away. No, especially when you do the taste of it. Because mm-hmm. most people go whenever they haven't had the taste of it. Yeah. I had the taste of like what it was like to play in front of you know, thousands and different things I got there and play for Armagh. And once you get the taste, it's hard. You're sort of thinking to yourself, I want more. Mm-hmm. And it's hard to then leave once you've got that taste of it. But like, it was obviously very appealing maybe at the time to some people. I know some people would have jumped at the opportunity, but just didn't really... Uh, like I, boys have went over before and they've come back maybe not the same player did you board. chat to anyone did I chat to anyone I chatted I did yeah I did chat to a few people about it who had been over there who were already over there mm-hmm. um, and in the grand scheme of things it probably didn't affect your opinion anyway or no it's not fair some of it did some okay. of it did definitely yeah it definitely did some like some boys had said no, it's brilliant, I loved it. And but more often than that, a few boys had said no, mm-hmm. it wasn't for me. And this is why. So okay, so just evaluated it and thought, no, it's just not for me. It's not for me. And I'd be a bit of a home not a homebird, but I just thought of going halfway across the world on my own wasn't really very appealing. So just that was it. There was a clip, I don't know if you remember, when yourself and Funbar Burns, uh, cousin of him, right? Yes, of and, and Gavin Burns, yeah. uh, far out cousin, yeah. were, were interviewed playing in Casement, I think, at half time. Uh, Clonus, yeah. Clonus, sorry, right, okay. okay. And, and Jerome uh, had asked you a few questions, and you were saying, <laughs> yes, you know, I hope you know, to get to that level to play for our match. <laughs> From such a young age, you know, that, yeah. that was the goal. But you sort of made the comment that, uh, what, what was it? It's like, I want to be a great midfielder like my father, but. Only I can shoot. Yeah, yeah, it was a cheeky wee lad. We were growing up now. Thanks for ringing that up. <laughs> well, my dad, uh, I just want to be, I just really want to be like him because he was a good, great midfielder and um, unlike him, I can shoot. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Does that banter still exist? You know, obviously, you know dad's reputation. We all see the clips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there, you know, you're playing obviously for Arma at the minute. Are you coming home and there's that bit of an exchange between you and your father you know is it who was better and who could shoot better and no in fairness we never really had that type of relationship um you know it was always he was always very hard on me that was one thing that i definitely remember after like any match 
Like I give you an example. I think an under sixteen championship match against Drummond Tee, uh I didn't play very well. I'm gonna be honest with you, and we lost the game. And at the time, I was getting into golf and loved the golf and was playing it a lot most evenings as you do during the summer. Um, and he, after on the way home, because I think he was the manager at the time, said obviously a few four letter words and whatnot. Uh, and I said, I'm taking your golf clubs off here, you're not getting them because mm-hmm. it's, it's affecting you. And he took them off for the rest of the summer. Um, how does that affect you? You know, just as Jarley Oak, the individual, we, we know what's happened as a result. He went on to great things, but at that moment, Jarley Oak, under sixteen, is he saying, "I don't want to play the football anymore," or is that drive come? I'm going to show him. Yeah, it was probably sort of that re- eureka moment where you're thinking, if he's saying this, you know, who else is going to like? If it's coming from your own, anyone like from your own father, you're going to say, "Right, I need to get the finger out here," and it probably was maybe a turning point. Um, Again, your the expectations you need to try and live. I wanted to try and live up to them, uh, and I sort of maybe felt at the time that that was holding me back. Like I, I, ne- I never played soccer. Was never allowed to play soccer. Really, I just sort of fell into golf accidentally. Uh, was the reason I got into it. But it was definitely at the time an, an eye opener, for sure. Uh, man of many sports, but who would, would you say is your sporting heroes? Obviously. Sporting heroes. Yeah. Uh, ones that I would admire, uh, maybe from the basketball, my, obviously Michael Jordan mm-hmm. would be one that would stand out. Uh, Why? Uh, I don't know. I just had, an, for some reason, I took an awful notion when I was 16 or 17 and just did loads and loads of research and watched loads of videos. I don't know why. And. I just like his demeanor and his mindset. And yeah, so it's, there. I, I like the way you said that. It, it's not that it's not that he has all the rings. It's not, it's exactly, not that he has yeah. all the ones. You like him for the individual or the sportsman that he was. For exactly, just the mindset and different things that you pick up from, and just nuggets of information here and there you can bring in <clears throat> to your own sport or your own game in general. Um, again, maybe looking at other sports, <clears throat> it's hard to look past. Obviously, past brilliant midfielders. Like, Derry, like Anthony Tobel, um, obviously in the noughties you had the likes of Sean Kavanagh, Kieran Whelan, different boys they got there, Darrow Shea, like, and even current ones now that I would still admire, like Fenton and David Moore, and obviously it's hard to pass them too, um, just absolute brilliant players um, at, their, at their craft too, um, maybe looking at other sports then too, uh, oh I'm struggling, golf, golf yeah, I was just always a, was a fan of Jordan Spieth, Always liked the way he go about his business, how sort of meticulous he was and everything he did and detailed he was. Um and was it, he was just a very good putter and it's probably something that's looked past. Mm-hmm. You, you know the whole the old saying, you know, drive for show, put for dough. Um so he, he was always a very good putter, which is probably the most difficult thing to get very good at in golf. But someone who probably doesn't play golf wouldn't maybe understand that, but maybe people who play golf maybe you know where I'm coming from there. So probably the ones that stand out anyway, just maybe just to name a few there. Who so, would be your Mount Rushmore Ooh. sports hero? So Mount Rushmore, there's four. Yes. Presidents. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to pick your four people that yeah. represent sports. Yeah. In your opinion, I guess. So in, in sport in general, sports, so you could, yeah. Obviously, you know, GA and then mm. basketball. God, that's the, you would get a two from most yeah, sports. Yeah, yeah. You can have four in one if you want. Yeah. Probably Michael Jordan. Um, I think I need someone from the GA in there, don't I? Just to be politically correct. Probably throw Daryl Shea in there. Probably someone maybe a pattern like pattern pattern my game around. Probably you know you grew up watching him. Yeah. yeah, I just grew up watching him in the noughties, so it was more so I just had seen him uh, when I was younger. Uh, uh, maybe then from golf, I go I go I go Tiger Woods, just on the fact that how he transcended the sport mm-hmm. and really sort of brought the generation we see now like you see obviously Bryson Shambo who had just been completely beefed up like he sort of started that trend of golfers being fit and being athletic and going to the gym uh, and just he just overpowered people back then and was just outstanding 
Um, so I'll probably go with him just because he transcended the sport in that way. Uh, and then finally, sure, we'll throw Phil Taylor in there just to give him a crack. He's a fan too. Yeah, we'll throw <clears throat> the Phil Taylor in there. 16. Can you throw, Johnny? I throw a bit just for the crack, yeah, yeah. I used to be I used to be a pure fanatic as well when I was younger, played for a team and all, it was a pub team, believe it or not. Very good. Yeah. Must have been a, a, a good standard then, eh? Yeah, I, could, well, I wouldn't say that, just a bit of crack. Like, I'm just, got decent enough. We have a we, dark board at home, so we're, they're obviously over lockdown, you just get sort of messing about and things like that there, but I'm sure look, it's a bit of crack. Yeah, so, sure. There you yeah. have Charlie Oaks, Mike Rushmore, <laughs> Echo Jordan, Dara O'Shea, uh, Tiger Woods, and Phil Taylor. Phil Taylor, what an athlete. What an athlete. <laughs> um, so, you know, it takes us nicely into our, our next point of conversation, <clears> really. <throat> you know, you must be flat out um, throughout the year um, going to football and primary school teacher, and, you know, you're still currently playing golf and all those things. What does Charlie Oak do to relax? Is it, is it the goes to the garage and throws the darts? Is it goes on the golf course and clears his head? <clears> or... Yeah. It's probably I, something. It's probably quite sad. No, just different maybe. Like I really enjoyed going to the golf course sometimes on my own and putting in earphones and just listening to a podcast or listening to music and playing twelve holes just by myself. And you're just in your own wee sort of world. Mm-hmm. Um, whether that be a case file, true crime. So we'll give, give her. We'll give her a few years a bit of a, a background on that. Yeah. You, you know you're looking at me because you did. You did recommend it to me a couple of times. Yeah. So. Case file is the name of the podcast. It is. Do you want to give us background on what it is or yeah, so what interests you here? Yeah, so Case File True Crimes, it's it's basically a series of, of podcasts looking at different uh, quite sort of gruesome, but like serial killers and murderers and different things like that like that. There's explaining uh, different scenarios and uh, how they went about sort of their business and sort of explores the mindset of them and different things I like got there and just uh, I've always sort of been interested in um, and yeah it's sort of again something completely away from sport and sometimes your life can be too emphasised around sport so it's just nice sometimes to just listen to something completely otherworldly and just something the complete opposite of sport so that's why I just like sort of t- it takes your mind off different things I got there. Just yeah. on that I remember you recommending this to me oh, yeah, I think you it all fast. And to an empty house. <laughs> <laughs> I just listened to this. Look, check, check over your shoulder. <laughs> and I just, I was in the car, but then I was like, somebody could be in the back seat. Oh, I feel you. Hey, I've been there many times. <laughs> like, you actually, if you don't mind me, if you don't mind me bringing it up again, I remember we were discussing this in Belfast last night. Yeah. I probably would be, uh, I would reckon, I would say myself that I'm a very much scaredy cat. You know, yeah, yeah, I don't have much at all into this, but. Probably from listening to your stories, you have a much higher tolerance than I do. Mm-hmm. But uh, if you don't mind me bringing up this story, you can you can fill us in on. It was yeah. one night you told me that you were driving around. I think it was somewhere at home. Yeah. And you said you listened to one of the podcasts, and I, I don't know. You can clarify. Somebody wasn't at your house, or somebody wasn't. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. So I think I was listening to a podcast, and it was it was the real part where it was just talking about the real detail and the reader is fantastic and unbelievable the, the, the way he schedules it and, and goes through it's unbelievable like um and it was really getting into it and i had come home and had hit pause and obviously again you're in your own wee world and come home and there's no one at home and i don't know like it's embarrassing talking about it now like but i was like i can't go into that house <laughs> on my own there's someone here <laughs> you know your mind wanders i think everyone's like, experienced that at some stage yeah you know? you're just you like not that there's obviously there's nothing wrong or nothing would happen like but you're just the imagination is a one is a strange thing so i had to hop back in the oak and, and, and drive on and just start driving until someone came home where killed. did you go uh where did i go just waste just killing time just, just killing like, time killing diesel yeah <laughs> But uh, yeah, I'm glad you brought that one up. Now. <laughs> so we, we, we've mentioned golf. You know, you're massive into your podcasts. Yeah. Uh, anything else that Jardy Oak does? We don't know about Jardy Oak now. Because yeah. I'm, I'm going to point you in the direction. We see the Jardy Oak in pictures um, in the media, but we don't get to know the real Jardy Oak. So yeah. what does Jardy Oak do away from the away from the cameras, away from the sport pitch? Yeah, you see, I'm probably the wrong person to ask. Like. My life has always revolved around sport, and it's probably where I'm at my happiest. And the only really sort of like 
again them case files or whatever is the only sort of time I would branch away from a sporting aspect and maybe enjoy it. Um, I suppose my teaching is another thing um, that gets me away. Like the school I'm in, I'm in now, there wouldn't it wouldn't be very GA oriented and maybe compared like, compared to other schools, which sort of suits me. Is that nice? It's it's nice, and there's no talk of football really, um, at all. Again, which which suits me because it can be sort of it can be too much sometimes, and it's twenty four seven, uh, and there's never really like if you played had a bad game, you know, you come in maybe expecting someone to say something, just slagging or whatever, but. They wouldn't even have known you were playing that weekend or whatever, you know, which is which is good and refreshing. Like, um, but just to answer the question and other things again, it's just as you said, just meet, something as simple as meeting up with friends for coffees or walks. You know, that's obviously a thing now. Um, can be refreshing and clear the mind too, um, and even therapeutic at times too, just to talk about different things away from sport or different issues in the world. So just things like that there is obviously very important. Probably it's nice, Charlie, that um, you know if, if you have a good game and stuff, you know people talk about going into school next day, and you can revel in that sort of praise, you know your kids and stuff. But you're saying from a different perspective, you know, regardless of how you play on that Sunday, you can go into, you can go into school on Monday, and you know, kind of nobody's really going to make a comment. Yeah. But you know, I'm just looking at it from the from the aspect that you know kids are wonderful. You know, yeah. but there's always going to be that one kid in the class that just oh, absolutely. knows how to push the buttons. Yeah, and kind of come into school. There's, there's no malice at all. Kids just no. say whatever comes to mind. Yeah, yeah, but they're going to say, "Well, sir, what about that point you missed yesterday?" Or yeah. something that just you just had banked in the back of your head. Yeah, um, it's just that one trigger point brings it up. And, mm. But does that affect you? Or and I know that's something probably that, that Emma wanted to touch on. Yeah, I was just looking to know how would you sort of cope with defeats? Do you lock yourself away and you like to talk about it? Mm. And it's the same way, you know, if you win, how do you deal with the hype? Do you like going down to the shop talking about the, or, you know, see someone in the shop or would you rather just, you know, uh, rather, you know, not talk about this loss? Or... Yeah, I suppose it's, it's, it's different for everyone. Um, dealing with heavy losses is different, obviously, when it's a club, a club match or a, a, a high, profile club match or whatever it, it really does hit home because you feel like you're letting real close members or even if your family or you know members of the club down and um, that can sort of hit home and it's you sort of do just sort of shut out um, and maybe it's a bit easier to shut out um, and then obviously playing with Arma it's a bit more difficult um, because you have the mix of whatever people talking about it on TV or on podcasts or whatever it's in the papers it's hard to sort of maybe get away from it and forget about it um, which is just natural it's just no reality it's the environment we live in like um, but I think I try not to get too high or too low I think that's sort of maybe the key to it um, like dealing with wins this is the worst thing you can do is get too high about yourself I, I feel and sort of the minute you think you're sort of the big man and like I arrived or I am here, I'm untouchable or whatever that like your mindset could be, is the the minute you're gonna lose it like you know, just you can lose it like us. Just just on that note, uh, I'm gonna draw your attention to Championship two years ago, 2018. Uh, you know, for me that was probably like myself and Emma knew you were a fantastic player. We were with you in, in St Mary's where you know you made yourself a massive name. And I know you don't want to say that, but that was the case. Um, but it was probably two years ago where Charlie Oves appeared on the massive stage for our man. Okay? So I'm talking about Ulster Championship came onto the scene. I'm going to draw your attention to Cavan in the semi final. Yeah, the first game. Drawing game was, was drawing game, yeah. immense. Okay? Um, I know you're going to be critical and stuff, but probably, you know, you're coming away from that drawing game and people were starting to talk about Charlie Oves. Okay? You maybe see your name more in the paper. You're meeting somebody at the shop and all those things, but I'm going to draw your attention to the the last couple of minutes in that game, okay? Mm. And you had a bit of a knock and you went off for the last minute, if I'm correct. In, in the, the first game, yeah, in the first game, and extra, then, in extra time, and then in the second game, yeah. there was another alterca or altercation or accident, mm. and you went off again, yeah. okay? 
And then there was these stories the next day coming out saying, yeah. Jerry was in hospital. Uh, I remember seeing interviews from Michael McConville trying to say, you know, the man's still breathing, the man's loving, he's fine, he's playing next week, sort of yeah. or he's fine, and all these things. But is that what you're talking about? This huge high, exactly. middle to low. Can exactly. Turn it, like that? it can change. Like, I don't really can. Like, especially when you're playing at that sort of high level and on, on that sort of microscope, mm-hmm. if, if you want to say that. Like, it's it can go, it can switch. Like, so you just have to try your best to keep grounded and understand why you're playing well and the mindset you had going in not that i'm very superstitious but again you try and keep sort of even keel the whole time because like anyone can play well you know again i'm not be it but it's the players who go on to do whatever are the ones that can consistently perform and that's how something where i'm trying to get to because i don't think i'm there yet and um, obviously it comes with experience too because obviously that first year, just everything came at 100 miles an hour and you're trying to take it in your stride as best you can, uh, which again, it can be tough. It can be like, because you obviously go off from playing well with St. Mary's and then and Dharma playing relatively well too. Uh, and then obviously the second day against Cam coming off and going to the hospital and different things I got there. And then just with everything blew up and with Paul Flynn, the GPA, uh, director at the time had rung me and said, "Listen, how are you? Because the media exposure here is just, you know, it was mm-hmm. everywhere. Um, whether like whether it was just given off to me for playing or different things I got there, and just like just well, you know, the G- the GP are here, we're here to help, and I understand that it, it's all new. Probably to you. we we don't see that. No, we don't see that. In a lot of a lot of people are questioning um, where are the GPA, but it's good to hear you know from an underpinning player. That exactly. Yeah. In the time, I'm not going to say a time of need, but yeah. the time where something was happening, the call came. The call came, and I, I wasn't expecting it, and it, it came, and it was just a nice sort of lift, and it was so overwhelming at the time. It was just like whoa, you know, I didn't ask for this mm-hmm. sort of type thing. Um and I think the draw had come out then that we were playing Monaghan and the qualifier so it was a quick turnaround, like um and I tried just to bank to put the back in mind and the back and thankfully we get the win against Monaghan and then as soon as you as soon as you win and even play it well, like people have short memories. Mm-hmm. Like it's just a bit it's just about winning. Like if you win it solves all problems. It really does like that's what it's about, like so um, yeah, once we beat Monaghan, that there was sort of swept under the carpet, all that there talk, silly talk, uh, and then we moved on next year. So, would you not really focus on negative comments or anything like that? Like, say someone in the media or anything like that has, or would you, would you be the type of person to only look to the future, or would you be maybe like the way Michael Jordan was, where you know, you know. I talk that personally. And yeah. And well, I'm not saying, I'm cer- certainly not saying I'm Michael Jordan now, but I <laughs> but just. Mindset we're talking about, yeah, just a similar sort of like mindset in that way. It was just, you heard the negative comments and it did sort of spur you on. It was something I took, had at a young age and probably at school level, you know, John Raffley, you probably know him, he's at the school mm-hmm. under St. Paul's the whole time. He just knew how to press my buttons. But he knew how to press the right ones and he'd whether it just be a comment in the corridor like you know he thinks you're shite you, you know that but it didn't work and it worked like yes. and like, i even remember my final year like he probably makes half half stuff up like i know mm-hmm. for a fact he did like there's some like i'm not going to detail but some silly stuff like but even my final year in st paul's i got two an all-star in fifth and sixth year and didn't get one seventh year and we were going into a game in the lockout who a boy had got one over me mm-hmm. and obviously i was already motivated anyway yeah but he had just sort of turned the screw like you know he got an all-star over you what do you think about that but you, did, you didn't need him to say it you said you were already motivated for that there but yeah. it was that extra it's just that extra way yeah. sort of percent yeah. and sometimes you need that Sometimes you do like me personally. Just it sort of gets you going. Whether it, it, he is making it up or whatever, like it, it, he knew how to press the buttons, and I played pretty well under him. Like, um, and that particular game played very well. Won, and you know that was great. And it again, it no, no one's everyone's different. Like that might work for other people. I sort of work just through trial and error. You know, in terms of preparation for games, and um, some things worked. Uh, some things I tried that didn't work. 
Uh, but it's just about finding what's right for you. I think it's a real sort of thing that people need to try, sort of trial and error, see what works for you. Like maybe something you think works now. Uh, there's other things out there that you could try that you know gets you going more. So that's it's just about getting you at the highest sort of pinnacle of your what you can give, uh, and whatever way you got to go about it, you just do it. So, so Charlie, we're going to go to our second uh, segment of the evening, Lovely. and this is a quick fire round. So. I just want you to, whatever comes to mind, and it's obviously there for a reason, okay? Mm. You, can, you can't think about it, yes, but give us what's fresh at the top of Charlie Oak's mind when I ask you this question. Yeah. So we start off um, rather simple, and we're, we're focusing on Gaelic football and GA. So, yep. uh, toughest opponent, and I'm going to ask you first of all, third, the toughest team you've ever played against. Toughest opponent? Uh, I have to say, probably Sean O'Shea in the Sigerson final. He was just superb. So is that is that Sean O'Shea or UCC as a whole? Are you saying no? It's definitely against Sean O'Shea. Definitely Sean O'Shea because if he wasn't playing, we probably would have beat them by about mm. seven or eight points. But he was just brilliant. He obviously he's very talented, but his his mind is so strong. Mm-hmm. Like you're not, you just you can't be rattled. He, I thought I was very impressed on there that night, um, and. He could work the ref too as well. He was very shrewd in what how he went about his business. I thought very impressive. Any teams you don't like playing against? Uh, any teams? I, I'm sick of looking at Cavan at this stage. We <laughs> played them two years. Then the obviously that the first game, then the replay, and then the following year we played them in the Canada Cup and then the National League uh, straight after. So that's four times, four or five times now in the last last year or two. So. The small show sick of playing. I'm sure they're sick of playing us too at this stage. But yeah, probably not. Uh, favorite place to play on? Ooh. Oh, Clonus. Uh, my summer's day. Mm-hmm. Those are championships. There's not like it. At this stage, the silver bread is crowned, man. Is, he is throwing yeah. his phone off the wall. Yeah, but well, that's it too. Like, well, obviously, it's up there, but that's the dream, obviously. Like, mm-hmm. you've, you've, everyone's been the Clonus uh, as. You know, as a young one going up the the hill and the the colour of the of the place and the, the sun shining and different things they got there. There's no other place like it. That's probably like it's what it's about. Like it's definitely something that sticks out in my mind down there straight away off the bat. But obviously, the club is where it all started too, so it's it's hard to look past that too. Least favorite place to play. Least favorite. Probably Callum Bridge. The the. Armagh training facilities. I'm sick, just sick of looking at it to be honest. Yeah, but yeah, it's it's well cut up now. It's only one field, so it's definitely something maybe something that sticks out in mind off the bat. So I go to uh, back to you were saying about preparation. What's the pre-match meal? The pre-match meal uh, again differs. I probably different to other people. Um, I'm quite sort of often and late eater mm-hmm. rather than you know. In, Big massive feed, we are wild, big other big big feed. I'm sort of a nibbler, um, and sometimes struggle to eat before games, uh, eat heavy before games. Um, so probably anything pasta related. It's not it's not set in stone. No, it's not. No, it's definitely not set in stone. And usually for for, for our my games, anyway, you're they're given food at a certain time mm-hmm. that you're just sort of given whatever's in the menu, and um, so you don't really have to worry about it. But with club games, I generally try to eat maybe two hours, two and a half hours before before the game. When you're, if you're eating something big, like, um, is there, is there anything that is set in stone? Any superstition? You're not you're not one of these people that put on the right side first, or um, maybe you don't want to tell us, but probably for some reason playing a certain song from walking from the bus to the change room. Uh, I have to have a certain song. Do you want to share? No. Um, what is the song? Your Side of the Bed by Lute. I probably won't Can't say I've heard it. Yeah, I'd say no one has heard it. Uh, it's just a real good, <clears throat> it's not a real head banger or uh, really, can't, it's just sort of a good feel tune. Just what you just, need just, to come from just, the bus. Yeah, too. and it just makes it. Don't mind bouncing off the wall. No, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Really <clears throat> yeah, I know others are different and others love that. Um, and others are very, very sort of deep in thought, and but that just never really worked for me. So uh, it was just sort of a real feel good song that just gets me in a nice mood. Yeah. Uh, Michael Jordan or LeBron? It's a silly question. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I kind of suspected that from what yeah. you said. Yeah. Give us the answer. 
Oh, it's Michael Jordan, I think. I think most people would agree. LeBron or Kobe? LeBron, I think. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think we'll go to uh, greatest ever Armand player. Oh, that's taking a big twist, but Ooh. I'll let you think about it. Uh, I suppose it's hard to look past the two footballers of the years. It was 02 and 03, Kier McGinney and Stephen McDonald. So it says a toss up just because they've got the player. Pick one. Pick one. I'm gonna keep pick, I'm gonna pick geezer, aren't I? Because he's not. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to see who the player. Yeah. Uh, I go with geezer. Steve McDonald or Alex McDonald. Oh, that's a good question. You have one spot left in your team. Who is it? Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I go with Stephen McDonald because he went to St Paul's best work as well. So the loyalty there, so I'll just so I go I go with Stevie. And I think uh we'll go with G A Greatest of all time, G A. Oh the goat. For you. I'm gonna be biased towards midfielders, I think. Um I think probably I think Jack O'Shea is something like two or three footballers of the years and Eight all Ireland's, um, so it's I suppose it's hard to look past past him. Like Gary Ledwinger, you you are aware the uh, connection made, maybe not, maybe not. Um, you know that Willie. Oh, no, uh, don't, 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 don't I, mention that. I don't even want to talk about it. But uh, call G the next Jack O'Shea. No, I, I know no, that's no. massive. I know that. Oh, yeah. Jesus. But he went downhill once he said that. But <laughs> uh, you know it's it's huge. Like, you know, great, great compliment. Massive compliment. Oh, Jesus. Did, did you see that clip at the time? Before the I could just heard about it. Or people had said, but I wouldn't have. I wouldn't watch it. I wouldn't have watched it because you can't. I wouldn't be in to sort of listen to them things, especially during the season. Um, let's try and say this, stay sort of clear minded. But no, I'm not having this. I'm not taking that compliment. No, sorry. There was actually a good debate on that there episode about who would win the thriller, Aidan O'Shea. And try to build Burns because oh, obviously God, you were yeah. playing Rio that weekend. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, who won the throw up? I think I. Uh, I think I. He knows right there. He knows. What's does that doesn't mean much, but yeah, I just I think I happened to get to the ball first and just was lucky enough. I think I absolutely wrecked myself in the process, which is sort of something I'm working on. Maybe not wrecking myself in the throw-ins all the time, but you just the ball's there. You just try and jump as high as you can for it. And, there's obviously a bit of technique to it too, um, about warrior jumping and different things like that there, but yeah, I just happened to win, I was lucky enough to win it. And I think actually in Edgar Mini one, we planned that I would go for the first one, because obviously there was talk, different talks, so I said, no, let me go for it. Mm -hmm. uh, and it sort of was a psychological baby battle at the team, um, which we you know got the ball and maybe we got a score off, so it was a good start, but I think Edgar Mini went for the, the one in the second half and won it too, so it was, you know, it's not a big see, see when you're saying there was talk, you know, is the talk Mayo might target Charlie over the first one, so will that Grumley go for the first one? Um, at, at that time, you're hearing that, you saying, no, nah, I'm going for the ball, let me go for the ball. Yeah, well, funny because whenever we played Monaghan, the, the game before in the qualifiers, and obviously I had severely injured my head from, from the throw in mm -hmm. uh, in the Calvin game. Uh, and it was sort of just agreed that maybe like don't go for the throw in against Monaghan because they might you know whatever yeah. or whatever. And you know Grimley won both or yeah one maybe one one and knock one the other one down to me. Um and then I just heard the murmurs and just pulled Grimley's eye and was like look I'm gonna go for this one. Uh so just got us and was lucky enough to get us and then we just switched back to him. He's like I'm happy enough with that you because He's equally probably maybe better failure than I am, so I was happy enough for him to, to go for it. You want to share how you jump? Because obviously, you see, you play in the <laughs> training, and then the in house games there, there was some areas. Mm -hmm. I always was just in awe of the way you went up for <laughs> I just it was like you had a stack in midair and had a second leap. Yeah, it was probably something I don't think I've ever shared this, maybe around 14, 15. Uh, I got these things called K bands, kinetic bands, when I was younger. Um, what are they? So they're two things that wrap around. One wraps around here, 
one wraps around here and there are two resistance bands here that attach and I also then got this thing called a Bowie Word program where I bought it was like a jumping program or like a, a power program and I went through it every day mm. and there were steps to and it was maybe a seven or eight week program maybe even longer and did all the exercises as, and I remember being outside and doing these different things and you know, my own said that was something crazy like um, but I think honestly think it's down to that I do. Um, do you still do it? No, I don't do it now because I don't have to. Because obviously, uh, when you're at playing with seniors, you're obviously like gym in a way and doing the things you're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. um, and it's sort of was something just by, it's banked now. And it definitely, I could definitely see straight away the explosiveness just sort of came. It was more, it was like, it was actually a basketball program. Yeah. Because that sort of type of, you know, physical thing. So I think. People ask me that all the time. I've never really shared it. I think it's down to that. That Boeing for a program that, that I just went to. The sales are going to skyrocket. Right right that there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that. Yeah, but yeah, that was, I think that was just down to that. Just by pure chance, they come across and said, I'm going to, you know, go for it. What's, what's the worst going to happen? And I just started, I was like, oh, I'm able to jump high all of a sudden. I, I, do, great. I do recommend anyone that hasn't actually seen you gonna throw up to go watch a YouTube clip of it? Yeah, I'm probably never gonna throw one again now after all this stuff. Everybody's gonna study, you know. <laughs> so, Jeremy, this segment here is called the Rumor Round. So, basically, we a few rumors, and you can confirm or deny if they're true or not. Um, maybe you've never heard them. Maybe probably have heard them. Mm. So, the first one here is. You played a bit of basketball during half time of an NBA game. Oh yes, 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 that is true. That's true. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. It was actually during a timeout. Timeout. Yes. It was during a timeout. We it was uh, in London, um, and you wouldn't believe this if you didn't see it. Like, but we so myself and brother and a friend had went over to London to watch the Indiana Pacers versus the Denver Nuggets. Uh, Paul George was playing for the Pacers, I think. Jokic was playing for Denver at the time. Uh, and we happened to get into the arena very early. Obviously, we were up in the crow's nest at the very top, but we, being ourselves, got got into the bottom at the very start and was watching just the players warming up, uh, as you do before they go in to, back into the change rooms. And so we're watching them. And some girl just comes over to us and says, Do you play basketball? We were just like, oh, I, we play a bit for the crack, yeah, we would. So I was like, do you want to play it during a timeout? We were like, uh, yeah, okay. No second thoughts. <laughs> yeah, no second thoughts there. We couldn't believe it. And uh, so my brother at the time had broken his collarbone. He had something or just good surgery maybe in the shoulder, so he couldn't throw, mm -hmm. but the other boy could. Um, so he said, right, you two are going to come down um, come round around seven when there's seven minutes left in the seven, second quarter uh, come down I'll be able to take you through you know security and all and you can get on the court so that was fine we were buzzing just for the Jesus we're gonna we need to get ready here uh, and you're in the toilet school like oh this. yeah yeah and it just, I'm no I'm no shooter like, uh, and so that was fine we come down uh maybe seven or eight minutes into the, into the or left of the second quarter, come down, she brought us through, literally brought us through court side, said, okay, wait here, you're gonna get called onto the court and you're gonna be told what to do. So we were sitting there, or waiting there, just a the court side, and Isaiah Thomas, and the bad boy Pistons, I know some people don't know what he is, but he's a very big deal, mm -hmm. and the Kembe Matombo with the, Man of Zaz, yes, whatever it is he said, yeah, was sitting right, literally where you are sitting right there with us, and we were just, we were shaking, I swear it was mad, like, and we went over and said, can you give me a photo, please give me a photo, he's like, yeah, and we were that shaking, my brother was taking the photo, and was shaking that much, <laughs> that the, the, the bloody picture was blurry, and they couldn't even use it, like, for anything, uh, and then we asked the camera in the tumble, and he just goes, 
<laughs> <laughs> so that was grand. We got we got we got um, brought onto the court then. And your man, listen, this is Jarlath from Ireland, and this is Pork from from Ireland. Blah blah. Uh, here's what you're gonna do. Um, you're gonna shoot. You're gonna shoot from the free throw line, and then run up and try and get a layup, and then shoot from the free throw line and continue that continue that cycle. Um, so I'm at the, standing at the free, free throw line with the ball. Mm-hmm. I look to my right, and there's Paul George standing there staring at me. <laughs> and I look straight ahead. So the, the seats just below the, uh, in other words, the seats below the yeah. basket. Yeah. Half the Arsenal team, Mesut Ozil, Alexis Sanchez at the time was just sitting right there staring at me. To the left, Ellie Goulding sitting staring at me. Uh, Thierry Henry. Uh, there could have been more, but that's that, the people all. And obviously, we haven't even talked about the, the 25,000 yeah. people Crazy. watching and also some BT Sport and all that there. It was unbelievable. And shot and was horrendous, awful. <laughs> but ended up winning the bloody thing. And uh, that was all right. It was brought then to the middle of the court and they said, okay, uh, would you get that many points? You get that many points. Okay, you've won. Congratulations. Oh, bye bye. Very good, Jesus Christ. Uh, and was brought off and was given an envelope. Was like, there you go. I was like, what's that? Well, that's your prize. And I go, oh, prize? What's the prize? Oh, it's 250,000 free air miles to America. And I was like, oh my God, this is mm-hmm. really What a prize. Unbelievable. And we were walking back then, back towards the seats, and Ellie Gooley was just like staring at us, I guess, here. And we just waved at her. <laughs> so we went back. Uh, and we're like, this is not happening now. And so that was grand. We went back up to our seats and then happened to took our phone out and our phone was just mm-hmm. hot. Because I actually remember uh, the boy from your club that we're quite friendly with, um, Aaron was saying mm-hmm. he was actually watching the match at TV. He was literally watching. Obviously, nobody knew what was going to happen. No. He just watched the match and I don't know, must have went to the fridge or something for a drink and then yeah. turned around to check the time out. There's Jarry Oak, um, Correct throwing free throws on BT Sport. BT Sport. You couldn't write at him. And I mean, my phone was hopping for the people saying, holy shit, what was going on here? You were playing an NBA game there. Or, 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 yeah. The, the time out. And it was just, oh, I still can't believe it happened. It's mad. But yeah, it's a story. Do you use their names? Oh, people aren't going to like this one. They didn't use them. I went it up. Already expired. Oh, ah, Charlie. It's not good enough. It's not good enough. They're they're expired about a year later, and I just completely it just didn't get away. Yeah, shocking, isn't it? We're, how are you even far away? Two hundred fifty thousand. I I think in fairness, it only maybe brought two people. I'm saying only, but I think it's just brought in New York and back. But listen, that's right. We we'll proceed yeah. um, to your second rumor. So. Charlie, um, I don't know if it's known or not, but it's it's definitely known um, probably in your circle of friends that you actually don't drink. Correct. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, and I'm just going to throw, you actually spent a summer in America, if I'm correct. I did, yeah. Okay, playing football for our team in Chicago. Um, now, I heard that Charlie was a party animal in Chicago. <laughs> Confirm or deny, party animal. Could not keep the man in the flat. Oh, that. this is... Bars every night, uh, different place to go, confirmed or denied. <laughs> I actually heard this rumour. Who did I hear from? I'm not going to say. But it was maybe people in Toronto or something there, but maybe. Had Somebody looking to see the, the downfall of. I don't know what it was. But it came back to me anyway that I was stone drunk in America and was drinking mm-hmm. every night and all this crap. Absolute crap. Like. Yeah. I, and I think I was living with a fellow Jason Duffy, who's also on my team. And I, I came and said this to him, and he just burst out laughing in the face. Because he was living with me, like, he was with me all the yeah. time. And he's like, how does that even start? How does that even go about? Mm-hmm. Why is that a thing? Um, but uh, I assure you, like, why would I, buy, I would say to people if it didn't yeah. Because it's not a big deal. Everyone drinks. Like, I see myself as the strange one not drinking. So it's not like it's a big deal if I start drinking. Like, so I don't yeah. know. Not and probably uh, myself and Ed were having a chat probably before, like, I remember living with you in, in Belfast, and you know, people talk about you know how you eat bike every night, drinking all those things. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes that sort of picks its, its toll on yourself. But yeah. probably if I was to look back, any night that I went out, you know, 
John Lennon was the first man through the door. You know? <laughs> it was nearly like, you know, we're going out tonight, let's go. You, you were dragging everything with you. you know? Oh, but, yeah. You know, at the end of the day, you'd have been the first man to take the, the lift home. Oh, and you'd been sitting in the lecture at 8.50 the next morning. Yeah. You know, us all... Hanging. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, so I'm, I'm just using it from, from my first-hand experience. But exactly, yeah, yeah. Rumours spiral. Yeah, they do spiral. Yeah, that's a good... That's, I don't know how long it goes on, but... Snow, snow, snowball effect, I suppose, yeah. Uh, this is one I really want to know. Um, <laughs> so, rumor has it, and I don't know how mm. this could start out, so I'm hoping it's true. Yeah. You and the yapper, Kieran McGinney, were planning on opening a copy shop <laughs> together. <laughs> Confirm or deny? No, that's. that's Half true. Oh, okay. Half okay. true, yeah, yeah. So, uh, I was planning to have opening up a coffee shop somewhere, yeah, maybe locally. Um, obviously, then COVID ended all that mm-hmm. talk. But no, I wasn't with Kieran McGee. You know, I had approached Kieran and met him a couple of times because he's opened up a couple of business himself. So, I just thought I'd use that asset and ask him what all the do's and don'ts about Because obviously, I have no background in business or anything, but I uh, probably should have came to you actually. Um, but he no, I just approached him a few times and asked him, but he, he was wasn't involved. It was another Armagh player who lives in Mullaghan as well, Owen McDonald, um, who's in the Armagh team who we, we had just sort of talked about and always sort of talked about. And then one day I said, right, let's sort of let's try. It. I think got a business plan, got um, different pieces of equipment, um, and just COVID hit, and there was there was obviously COVID went away maybe over summer, and we thought about maybe doing it. We said no. There's, it's, let's just wait until the whole thing completely settles and it's gone. And the places of vaccine before we talk about it. Uh, and then lo and behold, it came back. And thankfully, we made that decision because it would have been an absolute disaster. I'm sure most people, um, from a business background, don't like you know what I mean. It's obviously not a good time. I'm just trying to picture Johnny over the barista standing behind the counter, yeah, yeah. the apron, all, you know, mixing the coffees. Yeah, no, it's yeah. I'm not saying it's definitely going to happen, but it was. Talks and it was well, yeah, make sure to definitely be loyal customers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> get down the money, once, once that opens, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Jarth, um, we're just getting ready to finish. Uh, it's been great to hear from you this evening and the, the insight that you give, um, probably to your mindset was probably probably one of the most important things that I take out of the conversation. Um, I just want to finish off and just on the same sort of tone that we started with. What's the plans for the future? Uh, you know, what's what's Jared Field looking forward to, um, or anything you're thinking that I can't wait for that to happen again, or what's yeah. what's going to happen with Jared? Yeah, probably uh, uh, maybe a more in-depth approach to football and to preparation and different things I got there. Like I'm, trust me, far from the finished article. And have a long way to go and a load of different things as well as mindset too um, and it's just probably improving upon and trying to learn as much as you can off different players uh, gamma players or players from other counties or whatever um, and trying to be consistent with it but it's definitely I think, something to trying to keep improving because I'm nowhere near where I want where I, like where I want to be, want to be at to where I'm, I want to be at too so it's it's I think we're far from the from the finished article, so we've still have a lot of work to do in terms of that. But um, yeah, probably that in terms of football aspect anyway. If, if you don't mind me asking, because I know it was obviously a massive goal for you to to don the Armagh jersey. Mm. Uh, what's the goal now? What's the goal now? I think to to obviously win some or win something with the county. Yeah. Mm. I think that's everyone. Like that's yeah. it goes without saying. I think for, for anyone who, who who plays for the county or even plays for the club, is to try the eventual end goal is why you play is to try and win something. Like so, I think that's the next step um, in the process for for us to try and do. What's the plans for the future professionally? Uh, again, continue with the teaching. Maybe do <clears throat> a masters at some point. Um, I think. I think Four modules. I think I already have a module from the BGCU, so it's just been three to do. But uh, possibly go down that route, maybe being principal or vice principal or whatever. Um, coffee shop. 
we'll see how that goes I don't know if that, it's a runner yet not uh, a runner yet or not but we'll see how it goes but I think it's sort of maybe stay in the, in the present mm-hmm. and not look too far nope. ahead I think that's, that's probably a brilliant note yeah. that we're, we're having up the finish on yeah. you know Jerry Luke says he's happy to stay in the present now yeah, what, what better time than the present? So, Charlie, it's, it's fantastic to have you all. Thanks for having me. Hey, Jesus, I love this. New crack, yeah. Um, thank you very much. Um, that closes our, our, our second episode.